the principal name missing from that Kilmarnock lineup is former Manchester United striker Colin McKee, injured last week against Morton in the Cup. For Steve Mascray, who scored the two goals as substitute to beat the Greenock men in the replay, is in the starting 11, as is skipper Robert Connor, formerly of Aberdeen, who returns after suspension. And this is the man just one goal short of being the club's leading scorer for the season, Tom Black. The 32 year old former Airdrie and St Mirren fullback has scored four goals in the last three league games to take his total to five, all coming from his deadly, powerful left foot. Two shocks in that Aberdeen lineup. No Ian Jess or Duncan Shearer in the starting 11. Skipper Stuart McKimmy is back after injury though, and former Beacon City player Scott Thompson wears number seven, with the principal striking duty shared by Joe Miller and record signing Billy Dodds, who cost £800,000 from St Johnston last summer. He's the only ever present in the Aberdeen side this season, and he scored nine times, three from the penalty spot. And the referee this afternoon, another newcomer to the refereeing ranks of the Premier Division, Tom Brown from Edinburgh. match of vital importance to both sides both showing encouraging signs of picking themselves away from the relegation zone in recent weeks Kilmarnock coming into this match after three wins and a draw in the last four games they lost three times in the last 14 games Aberdeen on the other hand have lost just one of the last eight since they lost to Kilmarnock on the 3rd of December one goal to nil winning both matches this season in the league against Aberdeen so far 2-1 and 1-0 so Billy Dodds will have a major task up front here for Aberdeen here he is Thompson playing it in cleared by Whitworth this is Brown I'm oh, not sure he tried that it was very effective Stephen Wright showing his Athleticism there to get back to win possession from Mascray. There's Grant. And this is clear, it's picked up easily here by Wright. Chance to make for the byline. Flipping over the cross. Good effort there by Miller. Well, the defensive error there gave the chance for Stephen Wright to pick out Joe Miller for that very good header. Smith will take it. Dodge helped that on well. And he goes with one. This is Grant. A very good defensive hitter there by McPherson. Helped away by Henry. There's McKimmy. Given Aberdeen the lead, not a bad effort for this, but not good enough surely to beat a goalkeeper of the class of Likovic. They seem to lose the ball there. Well, a puff of the cheeks there for Drago Likovic. His temperament now put to the test after this mistake. Struck very well by McKimmy, but it should have been taken easily enough. Five minutes of the game now. Perfect start for Aberdeen. With, with a full stretch, and just up there. Just glass. Well, the kick's been out again, and it's been a very impressive opening this by Aberdeen. Joe Miller with the corner. By McPherson. This is Paul Kane. Ingles well forward. Battling with Whitworth. That's a better save. Scott Thompson's effort. And Likovic earning his corn with that very good diving save to his left. That was in the bottom corner. It's a very good save. Like Thornton said, agitated by the star his team has made. Not up to the stand that he wants, that's for sure. 
himself there to get back. Receive the throw. Brown's layoff. That's Black. Now Henry. Mastry keeping an angle wide of the left. Henry again. Back it comes to Black. Better play from Kilmarnock. Smith's head up. Good battle there by Mascray. Corner playing it to Mascray again. A wrestling match there with Wright. It's a free kick against Stephen Wright. Now oh, Kilmarnock trying to lift the game here after a very slow start. Steve Mastry with the free kick. Walker won that very well won by McKimmy. Went away by Grant. That's Connor. The ball can't be thrown. Getting some encouragement here to their supporters. That's one by Henry. A chance here for Kilmarnock. John Henry has become very much involved in the action. That's a big boost to the Kilmarnock cause, stealing this brilliantly from Paul Kane, keeping a shot down, but still has made a good save. Good work, very determined. This is Henry. Good running by Masker ahead, making space here for Brown. Good ball back in. McKimmy did well. Very good running, though, by the front men for Kilmarnock. Masker and Brown showing a good understanding with the diagonal cross running there. But one joining the attack here in the corner. Taken by Mark Riley. Awkward there and almost crossed in by Masker. Joe Miller on the post. The left off without question there for Aberdeen. Steve Masker right out of luck. Punched away from Black by Thompson. Here's Connor. Ah, looked like a foul from the rear there. By Dodds on Connor. It's been given. Dodds is in some pain here. He's damaged his ankle, making that challenge. Got the challenge from the rear there, and you can see Dodds buckling at the ankle. A free kick chance here for Tom Black. Billy Dodd staying on the field. They're all retreating. There's Black. Reflected and just behind to the corner. Good effort from Tom Black. A very rich vein of scoring form in the league. Came off Billy Dodds there. Greg Mitchell. Well, oh, he's very powerful in that position, Ali Mitchell. Tends to score spectacular goals. He's trying to do just that here. He stepped towards the penalty box. Good effort. Tom Black playing up deliberately against Dodds. Great goal by Masgrave. 
Oh, it's Lugie Mimula. Well, after that very sprightly opening, Aberdeen really have struggled to become involved as an attacking force. There's a great turn there by John Henry, and Paul Kane is surely booked for that. He was very well beaten there, though, by John Henry. It was a superb turn. Again, Brown, Henry falls again, and Gary Smith had to be quick. There's lots of variety of invention about the Kilmarnock attacking play. It will look to be a refreshing side. Here's Mark Riley. Headed by Brown! Kilmarnock in the lead! Perhaps the smallest player in the penalty box leaps to head home for Kilmarnock. Five minutes of the first half gone, and Tom Brown leaped to the near post to bullet home the header. Well, what a very fine goal it was by Brown, his start of the season. He clearly enjoyed that hugely. The question marks, though, among the Aberdeen defenders about how Brown could get to that so cleanly. There's a good ball, Mitchell in behind right. Taking on Ingalls to the byline. Kilmarnock getting support up for this attack. Great play by Masquerade. There's Mitchell driving it in. The good effort there by Henry arriving late to the six yard line. Followed by McKimmy who picked him up extremely well. Good play again by Masquerade. An Indian somewhere in his career. Mitchell driving in a dangerous ball and Henry under pressure from McKimmy. And half time with some goal, a thoroughly entertaining first half. Set away early on by the error by Dragon Yulekovic, which gave Stuart McKimmy the opening goal for Aberdeen in five minutes. And then Steve Maskey scored a fine goal from Tom Brown's service, and then Brown himself bullied it home the header from Mark Riley's corner kick to give Kilmarnock a deserved lead at half time. It's Kilmarnock 2, Aberdeen 1. Aberdeen get it underway in the second half, and I've uh, got it. Willie Miller will be looking for a great deal more from his team in the second half. And so far, well, certainly the closing half out of the first half. After a bright start, Aberdeen were really hustled out of things by Kilmarnock. They were good value for the lead at half time. Getting a very healthy reception from their home supporters, too. Style of play clearly appreciated by the Kilmarnock fans. Also, I think for any neutrals arriving here, there's a good snapshot by Masgrave. And there across his market again to test Theo Snelders. He did well to get to that at all and control the shot. Interception there by Grant. There's no offside this time. Mitchell. Attack McKimmy. He has support winning in the middle. Henry's there. So is Brown. So is Masgrave. Have to settle for the corner. Oh, oh, by Riley. It's won oh, by Kane. Oh, Riley again. Now Mitchell. Connor. Now Black. Good shooting chance on here, perhaps for Black. With a buzz of anticipation around the stadium when Black gets into that shooting position. Terrific power of the left foot, stepping inside his man to set himself that shot. The layoff from Dodds finds Grant, as his right. Good pass. Pumps the play in for Dodds, a chance to Aberdeen. Good marking there by Whitworth. Big center half did well there. Promising move that from Aberdeen. Well won by Ingalls, this is Riley. Now McPherson. Here's, Hen here's Brown again, Henry makes a good run. Good effort by Henry. Masquerade appeals to him. He wanted to all play it across in front of goal. John Henry takes up so many good positions like this inside the opposing penalty area, lashed that across. 
fine, creative player. Supports the front two very well indeed. There's Glass. It came off. McPherson. Short corner kick. Another corner kick. Two for Aberdeen. Almost caught napping there, not getting too bad out to the short corner. The way by McPherson again. Glass heads it in, this is Dodds. Turning well. They're on the side of the cross, Barry goes sheer. Right, come on, and have survived. Duncan Shira to go knock it ahead there. The pain of missing for well, William Moore. What a good shot this is by Billy Dodds on the turn. It beat like it, but you're going to touch on the crossbar. And then the boot was up there, and that challenge on Duncan Shearer by Anderson. Shearer being spoken to, I think, for this protest. What a gig it is. That's a little bit great save by Lekovic. More work for him to do. That's a very good punch out. That's Grant. Keeper. He touched that shot from Dodds on the crossbar, then made a very good punch out from that corner. No luck for Dodds. That's Shira to Dodds, waited too long. Now Black to step in. Brown with Ingalls. That's Smith. Poor ball, given straight to Riley. Straight to Riley again. Here's Henry peeling off to the right. Mitchell with a turn pass. That's for Brown, he's onside this time. Mitchell also onside. Good early cross, there's Masgrave, beating the ball by Wright. That was great defending. Outstanding defending by Wright. Under the most severe pressure. What a great move it was though on the right, Ali Mitchell whipping this across. Very dangerous ball, Mastry waiting to play that in. And right got there first. Last losing out to Mitchell, Brown to Henry. Forward it goes to Mastry, who was onside, breaking against that back line again. Anderson's header, that's Henry again. Now Brown, looking for Mastry. Dangerous ball out by Stelda, Smastri almost intercepted. Led in by Aiken to Dodds, a shooting chance here for Miller. There's Shearer. Well, he's always looking to engineer a shooting chance, and then he gets possessed inside the box. That's what he did there, he showed some excellent control with a very awkward ball, chesting it down, lofting it forward, and all that was wrong was the finish. That tells the story of the match so far, just over six minutes plus injury time remaining. This is John Henry. And now, Connor, back with Black. That gives it away. Here's John Henry. Trying to get away from Smith for a shot at goal. Well, he's playing very well indeed. An attacking midfield role for Gilmarnock this afternoon, John Henry. £175,000 he cost from Clyde Bank early in the season. Looks like money well spent. again, Smith made the tackle, there's Roberts again, and that settles it! It's a magnificent goal for Kilmarnock! Two minutes from the end, they've been under the cosh for so long, and then now Mark Roberts produces a goal, 
of real opportunism and quality. Look at the way he turns on this. Cut the break of the ball and volley that beyond fierce elders to settle the game for Kilmarnock. Well, it's been a rousing match right from the start. And it has a fitting end with a really outstanding goal scored by young Mark Roberts, the substitute. Look at this, he fought through the tackle from Gary Smith and volleyed the ball in the corner. So there's Connor. He's down to that, it's a throw to Aberdeen. No way back, surely now for Aberdeen now. In goes with the header. Big bonus too for Kilmarnock is that their front men have scored. Tom Boyce, Steve Basker, now Mark Roberts, the final whistle goes. It's been a terrific performance from Kilmarnock. They came back from a deadly start, going a goal behind, then came back in the second half after a long spell under the cosh, leading by two goals to one half time, and Mark Roberts produced that stunning goal, two minutes from time, which settled the points for Kilmarnock and takes them further up the league table for Aberdeen, a major blow in their attempts to get back in the rails. They had lots of possession in the second half without creating many clear-cut chances, and that'll be a matter of concern to Willie Miller. Overall, a great match, won deservedly by Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock 3, Aberdeen 1. I think they're all difficult matches, especially against Aberdeen. Luckily, uh, that's the third result we've had against them this season. But you always know you're in for a battle. They've took an early lead. And uh, <clears throat> to give it to the lads earlier on in the season, we've been scoring early and then conceding goals late on. So we seem to have got that sorted out. Maybe we can see the goal a bit early and, like you say, uh, slow starters now and again. But we seem to be battling. And like Tuesday night in the Cup, we conceded early and ended up coming out with a the result there as well. Was there a problem early in the match with his son coming over that stand? Behind the oh, goal? definite problem. I mean, for the keeper, I mean, the goal they've got, <clears throat> obviously, the son's caused a great problem. He, he said he's just, like, lost it completely. And, I mean, um, you can't allow for things like that, I suppose. There seems to be a great spirit about the Kilmarnock team, Neil. Isn't that your impression? Um, I think that was my impression as soon as I came down here and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to stay. The, the spirit of the lads and them, they're all looking for each other, you've not got any, anybody who thinks they're above anybody else so everybody's there, you're getting a bit of trouble, there's people there to help you out and that's how it should be I think. From your point of view, coming to Kilmarnock from Manchester United, how have you found the transition? Um, it's difficult for me to comment, like I've said before, um, it's, a, it's um, a change from reserve team football to first team football in my opinion and not from Scottish to English like. Uh, English to Scottish, sorry, <clears throat> but um, I'm loving it. I mean, I've been out for four games with suspension, and I'm just hoping to get back into the frame of things. And he's one of the best young defenders in the division, no doubt about that. And that might just be a very significant result today. Kilmarnock's third win this season over Aberdeen, and uh, well deserved, Derek. I think so. I think Aberdeen started off the better side the first 10 or 15 minutes. They looked up for a bit. After that, I thought Kilmarnock dominated the game. They had the better chances to win it. Yeah, this is now Alex Totten's team. It's got yeah. Alex's stamp all over it, really, hasn't it? It is. Well, he's, he's bought very well. I mean, you just saw the young man there, Whitworth. I think he's a magnificent centre half. And of course, Colin McKee as well. Two great buys. He's always very, very shrewd. Mm -hmm. when he's buying Alex Totten and uh, I'm sure they'll do well. Yeah, let's take a look at the goals then. Uh, three very different goals, first yeah. two headers and then uh, the Mark Roberts shot. This is the first of them, Derek. Well, it just came from the long point. Sometimes that's only from A to Z, that's what you do. But a lucky break here, I think, for Brown in the first place. Henry just hit it through Harry's heel, got the break, but this is a superb ball into the middle. Plenty of Aberdeen defenders there in front, so the ball had to come over very accurately indeed. You see them all trying to get back, but Masker is brave. He doesn't know the goalkeeper's not coming out. He's dived there six inches from the ground. That's a good header. This is a tremendous goal as well. The man's only about five foot seven here. Different class, Tom Brown. He's up there, he hangs in the air. Just gets a yard on Stephen Wright. And I think William Miller will be disappointed with these defenders, but that's a smashing goal as far as the, the striker's concerned. Aberdeen obviously pushing forward near the end, trying to get the equaliser. Young Roberts just on there. I mean, he's just turned and hit that ball, and his luck was in today, right into the corner of the net. You can't blame the goalkeeper for that one. Got a wee break there. He's back to the goal. It's a good turn. Knows where the goal is, and that's a good shot. And talking of good buys by Alex Dawson, Drago Lekovic cost about £100,000. Good goalkeeper, but uh, there was a moment today which, uh, well, let, let's blame it on the sun, but... Uh, I don't it's think it's one you all want to forget, <laughs> isn't it? It is. It's one, the sun was pretty bad there, and it's, 
It's a good shot by Stuart McKimmy from about 30 yards there, but really, he got his hands to the ball, and he certainly, that's... It's a real howler, isn't it? It is a howler. I mean, he'll know that himself. He's he get his hands to the ball. You can only blame the son for that, but nonetheless, he's lost the goal, and I don't think he'll be videoing this tonight, that's for sure. But he had a smashing game after that. He had two or three great saves. The one there from Paul Kane, bottom left, he's down well for it. For such a big goalkeeper, you get down well. A little deflection as well. I mean, that made up for the one that you lost just a few minutes earlier. This one for me is, is an, an unbelievable save. I mean, from there, it's as if Billy Dawes has just hit the bar and he's unlucky. But from behind the goal, you show what a magnificent save it is. Great control, got himself a bit of space. Look at the touch onto the bar. That's what made the difference there. And he's been another very, very good buy for the club. So, Bob, five years as chairman of Killy. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, if we were marking your report card five years in, what, what would you want it to say? Um, well, I've, I've been. Sometimes you get delusions of grandeur. You see, you spend five, <laughs> you spend five years in football, and you're chairman, and you're in television, and things like that. And, um, but if you ever want back back down to earth, the fans certainly do that. Um, we beat Rangers, f you know, f at the end of last season, and I was feeling real chuffed. I went into the, the Killy Club next door, and this chap comes up and says, "Mr. Fleeting, could you speak to my wife?" Now I'm assuming she's wanting an autogra autograph. So I go across there and say, "Yes, love, can I help you?" She says, "Yes, Mr. Fleeting." She says, "Every time I get into the ladies' toilet, there's no toilet roll." <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so straight back down here again. And you dealt with it Monday morning. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rugby Park is obviously now becoming a very impressive stadium indeed. How have you managed to do that in such a short time? Well. Um, People were surprised that when we said we'd do it within a year, right? Obviously, the, the construction company have done very well, but it took a big decision for us because um, we'd procrastinated over whether we'd do it, whether we'd move somewhere else, whether we'd look for a fairy godmother to build as a stadium. And um, we realised, we, we, I mean, we're fortunate. We looked at Hibs and Hearts and Celtic, for example, and we tried to learn from, from that. And the decision was made, my board of directors backed me 100% on this. The decision was made to go ahead and just plough everything into it. And um, they've asked me, they said, where did you find the money? I said, well, I had it somewhere. It was in a drawer, but it seems to have went missing recently. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it with mirrors, but we're very fortunate. We've got a good group of fans. We've got an excellent um, team just now, um, good management team and an excellent board. And you made so, one of your fans very happy today, of course. Whose idea was it to, uh, to commemorate your fifth anniversary in the way you did? Well, we tried to think of many things w to do. We talked about sending someone away for a holiday and the like, but um, this was very special. I mean, I'm real pleased that the Comano fan was, I mean, I was <laughs> dreading it. I had someone with a red scarf running out and winning that car. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, it doesn't look like me, my brother's doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wonderful moment. So briefly, what, uh, what's the plan for the rest of the season? How high can Kilmarnock finish? Well, someone said to me, you're only seven points off the relegation spot. And I said, looking at the league, I think we're only seven points off the European spot. Um, the team have just got to continue to play the way they're playing. Um, I think they can do anything. I mean, it's been a while since we were beaten. And um, they've got a young, very young team. And um, they're, they're trying very hard. And they work for each other, and um, they play good football. That's why the fans are coming. I mean, there was nine and a half thousand people there today, and that was real. That was smashing. Been a great first five years for you, Bob. Well great. done, and Thanks. enjoy the next five. Thanks. So, how do today's results and the four divisions affect the league tables? Let's take a look. <laughs>